Pickup trucks and SUVs are big business. And no, I'm not just talking about the US either. Around the world, more and more SUVs and pickup trucks are being sold. In the US alone last year, 12 out of the top 20 vehicles sold were either a pickup or an SUV. And the top three vehicles sold last year, accounting for 1.98 million total vehicles sold, were all pickup trucks. People love pickup trucks because they're capable of hauling large amounts of weight, they have great load carrying capabilities, and they're perceived by buyers as being safe. And aside from people who genuinely need a pickup truck for their daily work, they're viewed as a status symbol by an increasingly large number of consumers. They also have completely abysmal gas mileage, with the best gasoline pickup available last year, the Ford F-150, offering just 26 miles per US gallon, that's 9.05 litres per 100 kilometres. And while electric car sales are really growing thanks to Tesla's massive growth in production and deliveries, and more modest increases from other automakers around the world, they're doing very little to displace pickup trucks. But there's a problem. As the recently released UN Climate Report details, keeping temperatures from rising beyond the Paris Agreement's target temperature, after which point planetary changes are forecast which would be catastrophic to human life, is looking increasingly tough. And we're told, unless we see the kind of global concerted effort to change our lifestyles and emissions output immediately, well, then we're boned. We need cleaner pickups. Now, why aren't we seeing any electric pickups yet? And what's the best way to build a plug-in pickup that will give customers what they want while simultaneously doing what's best for the planet? Before I deal with the why not, I should perhaps give a small nod to the GM S10 EV and Ford Ranger EV, both of which were made in small quantities for California customers and corporate fleets. They were all electric, but designed for city use and were very much compliance trucks. In order to really make an impact into the future, plug-in trucks need to be mass market, mid to full size affairs, capable of everything that today's pickup trucks can do. Yeah, there are a few small companies looking to bring plug-in pickups to market in either plug-in hybrid or all-electric form, but right now diesel and large engine gasoline pickups are still very much in charge. And since pickups and SUVs often share the same base platforms, the same is true for larger SUVs as it is for pickups. Why no plug-in pickups yet? Profitability, concern over battery prices, and an if-it-ain't-broke-don't-fix-it mentality on behalf of automakers. Screw the climate. There are things that are changing though. Ford is working on a plug-in hybrid F-150, we're told, but way too slowly, and we need pickups at all levels. One answer, of course, would be to go all Tesla on the problem and make a bespoke high-end electric pickup truck with a large battery pack slotted underneath the vehicle's body. Put a high power motor on each axle and supercharging or similar tech, and the jobs are good. Un'. It's certainly technically possible, but while batteries and electric motors are more than capable of providing power and grunt to the most demanding of pickup truck duties, heck, we're seeing electric dump trucks, so why not electric pickups? The costs associated with making an all-electric pickup may simply be too much for automakers to underwrite without putting a whole lot of extra cost onto the consumer. So while we should hold an all-electric pickup truck as the gold standard, I'm going to suggest an alternative that may be controversial, uh, but I think one that would revolutionize pickup trucks, a series hybrid range extended model. We've already seen a couple of companies bring such an idea to the table, but to date, large automakers have shied away from the idea. I'm going to tell you now why it's a good idea though, and why automakers need to start producing them. First, let's examine what I mean by a series hybrid range extended pickup. In a traditional internal combustion engine truck, power from the engine is sent to the wheels using traditional mechanical transmissions. In an electric vehicle, the motor turns electrical energy into mechanical energy and is fed to the wheels via a much shorter, more efficient fixed gear transmission. A car like the Toyota Prius with a series parallel drivetrain can provide mechanical power to its wheels through the transmission, which is in turn powered by either the internal combustion engine, the electric motor, or a combination of the two. Excess power generated by the engine, it's run in a reasonably narrow power window to ensure peak efficiency, is captured by a second motor within the transmission unit and uses that energy to be stored in the car's battery pack. In a series hybrid, however, the engine is run at a constant speed, a speed that's been determined to be the most efficient in terms of fuel economy, while also being the least polluting in terms of emissions. That engine is directly connected to a motor or generator, depending on how you want to view it, which turns the mechanical power from the internal combustion engine into electrical power. 
That electric power can then be stored in the battery pack for later use or sent to the motor or motors attached to the vehicle's transmission for motive power. A plug-in series hybrid simply adds a larger, more capable battery pack to the mix, allowing the vehicle to operate in all electric mode, but then operate the internal combustion engine as a range extender if required. Why not call this a range extended EV then? Well, some range extended EVs, the BMW i3 for example, has a tiny internal combustion engine that's not designed to allow the vehicle to operate for extended periods of time in range extending mode. In order to truly convince pickup buyers this drivetrain would do everything they needed of it, a pickup truck with a range extender would need the capability to operate as a series hybrid without a plug if required. The reason is simple. Pickup trucks can be used in remote locations without power, and for people who actually use their trucks for a living, stopping to recharge is seen as a bit of a turnoff. Worried about development costs? Well, lots of buses and commercial vehicles already use such drivetrains with and without the plug, and large mining vehicles have been using hybrid diesel electric drivetrains for years. So how would you look at this in practice? Well, you'd start with a battery pack between the pickup chassis rails. Ideally, I'm suggesting it would be about 30 kilowatt hours minimum in size. That would be enough to offer all electric operation for those who just use a massive pickup as a commuter vehicle and refuse to buy something else. Then you'd add an internal combustion engine attached to a powerful motor generator under the hood. It would still need to produce a decent power output, say 300 horsepower, but wouldn't need to be as massive as the engines in current pickups because, well, electric motors produce more torque and the battery pack would act as a reservoir to provide that extra grunt for the few moments that it was required when pulling away or climbing a large hill when towing something behind. The internal combustion engine would be designed to run at its most efficient speed and only be switched on by the car when the battery pack reached a set state of charge, say 30% or less. Finally, you would add high power rapid charging and perhaps power takeoff as an option, allowing people to use their pickups as mobile power stations when required. High power charging is essential here because it allows the owners to recharge quickly and reduce their fuel costs if required, and it also gets them used to plugging in. I know by now that some of you are probably frustrated that I'm suggesting a solution involving an internal combustion engine, but by reducing the battery pack costs and adding a second powertrain, it allows pickup drivers to benefit from electric power while knowing they have the backup of internal combustion when required. This is especially important given the duty cycles that some pickup trucks are put through in their day-to-day -day life. Will this all affect price? Yeah, probably a little bit. And yes, we could go all electric too, but making a complete switch to electric, which would probably require 150 kilowatt hours or more of batteries, at that kind of scale would bring its own difficulties to the table in terms of battery supply versus demand. Will it happen? Is it possible? We've seen a couple of companies try, but until large automakers make the switch, we're going to be stuck with the status quo. And that's not going to be good for the planet or anyone else. Sure, electric cars are making a positive impact on the world's emissions as the grid gets cleaner, but switching to plug-in series hybrid pickup trucks would probably have a much larger impact given the size of the pickup market. The challenge now, of course, is to convince customers that it's a smart move because pickup owners who use a vehicle for their job will pick a vehicle that does what they need at a cost they can afford. And if the cost benefits of filling up less and the social costs of reducing the effects of man-made climate change can be argued effectively, I think many business owners will make the smart choice that's best for them and everyone else. That's it. Don't forget to give us your thumbs up or your thumbs down. Leave a comment. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell below. As always, thanks to our Patreon supporters, without which we'd not be able to produce any daily content for you all to enjoy. We are always welcoming of new Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash transport evolved, or you can follow the link right here. But now there is an additional reason, at least for the rest of this month. We are selling our Halloween special t-shirt over on our shop below. Anyone can buy one. But if you're a Patreon supporter who donates more than five bucks a month, you'll get a store-wide discount for the month of October. And that includes that OPEC scaring Halloween t-shirt. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep evolving.